Okay, we're going to look at some various reading interventions. The first one that we're going to start with is um, called Cover, Copy, and Compare. So I have created a list of words for you. Um, and this intervention works like this. You are going to um, study the words, look at the words that I've listed here. And then when you think you're ready after about a minute or so, you're gonna cover them up so the paper folds easily like this. And then you are going to write the word. And then, and you can, and we'll do it one word at a time. And then you'll uncover it and compare what you wrote with the model. And if you're correct, then we'll move on to the next one. And if you're incorrect, then you get a second try. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to do one word at a time for the 10 words. Okay? Okay. All right. So there's your pen. So if you want to study the first word, and when you're ready, you can fold the paper over and copy it. You don't have to say the word. You're just writing it. Okay, you're just looking at the first word. Are you ready to write the first word? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to cover it up. Now you write the first word. Good, now you'll uncover it and compare it and see if you got it right. Okay, good. Number two, take a look at it. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Write it in the space that says 2A. And then we compare it. C E R E B. You missed that one. You missed one of the letters. So we're going to look at it again. So study it again. The word is cerebral. And then we'll cover it and you get a second try. And then we'll uncover it. C-E-R-E-B-R-A-L. Very good, you spelled it correctly. Let's just try one more. This next word is derelict. Study it for a few minutes or a few seconds. Are you ready to try it? Okay, so we're gonna cover it. And then compare, D-E-R-C-L-I, is that an E? Mm -hmm. Okay, D-E-R-E-L-I-C-T, very good. Okay, so that's the way that intervention works. It's called Cover, Copy, Compare. Okay, the next intervention is called choral reading. And so for this intervention, I'm gonna give you each the same passage. If you'll scoot up to the, each of you is gonna get a copy of the passage called Caves. And we're just gonna be looking at the first paragraph. Um, so I'll go ahead and give you, they each have a copy of the passage here. There you go. So we're just gonna be looking at the first paragraph. Um, and it's the title is caves, so it's um, it's a it's a paragraph about some facts about caves. Um, I'm going to point out a couple of vocabulary words. Um, if you look at, see if you can find in the almost at the end stalactites and stalagmites. Do you see both of those words? Mm -hmm. Yes. So those are some of our vocabulary words that you might want to. Pay attention to when we get there. Um, so I'm going to model a fluent reading of the passage. Um, and I want you to pay attention to the rate that I read and my accuracy, my pronunciation, things like that. Okay, so I'll read the first paragraph and you're just going to follow along. Are you ready? Okay. Caves or caverns are large underground openings. Most caves in the United States are made of limestone. 
Limestone dissolves when it comes in contact with rainwater or groundwater containing acid. Some limestone caves start as sinkholes and then become closed off over time. In limestone caves, dripping water and minerals form large column-like formations. The most common and well-known of these formations are stalactites and stalagmites. An easy way to identify these formations is to remember that stalactites with a C come from the ceiling and stalagmites with a G come from the ground. All right, so going back to those two words, stalactites and stalagmites, you can see that the paragraph itself gives you a clue to help you remember what each of those words means. Are there any other um, words that you have questions about in the paragraph? Can you answer audibly so that the video can hear you? No. Okay. All right. So when I tell you to start, you're going to begin reading together. Um, <clears throat> and I'll be listening. And then when we're finished, we'll go over any, any words that we have difficulty with. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Read together. You may begin. Caving and or splunking. No, the first paragraph um, that I just read. Sorry. Caves or caverns are large underground openings. Most caves in the United States are made of limestone. Limestone dissolves when it comes in contact with rainwater or groundwater containing acid. Some limestone caves start as sinkholes and then become closed off, off, off over time. In limestone caves, dripping water and minerals from large column-like formations are most common and well-known of these formations are stalactites and stalagmites. An easy way to identify the formations is to remember that stalactites with a C comes from the ceiling and stalagmites with a G comes from the ground. Okay, that was very good. I would like to point out one um, error that error in, in word reading that caused you to um, not pay attention to the punctuation in the next sentence. So if you look at the sentence that begins with in limestone caves in the middle of the paragraph, does everybody see where I am? Yes. Read that sentence again with me. In, in limestone, limestone caves, caves dripping water, water and minerals from the Okay, stop. Look at the word after minerals. What is that word? Form. 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 It changes the from. whole sentence, not from. Okay, start with in limestone caves again. In, in limestone, limestone caves, caves Dripping water and minerals form a large column-like formation. Good job. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. That was the choral reading intervention. Okay. For the next intervention, it's called partner reading. So we're going to look at the next paragraph, that the second paragraph on your page that starts with caving. And y'all are going to take turns reading. Um, we're going to go sentence by sentence. So Ansley will start with the first sentence and Graham will follow along and then Graham will read the second sentence and then so forth and you're going to take turns, okay? All right, Ansley, if you want to go ahead and start with the second paragraph. Caving or spelunking is the recreational sport of exploring caves. Both water-filled and air-filled caves attract many visitors each year. Underwater caves are located beneath the ground and open from the floor of many bodies of water. Some air-filled caves can be explored easily on foot, but others are more difficult to reach. Some extreme cave explorers use ropes by pulleys to climb miles underground into caves and squeeze into tight crawl spaces using only a headlamp or flashlight to guide their way. Good job. Now we're just going to do that same paragraph again, but this time Graham is going to start followed by Ansley. All right, Graham, go ahead. Caving or spelunking is a recreational sport of exploring caves. Both water-filled and air-filled caves attract many visitors each year. Underwater caves are located beneath the ground and open from the floor of many bodies of water. Some air-filled caves can be explored easily on foot, but others are more difficult to reach. Some extreme cave explorers use ropes and pulleys to climb miles underground into the caves and squeeze into tight crawl spaces using only a headlamp or flashlight to guide their way. Very good. Thank you for doing partner reading. 
Okay, for this next intervention, it's called duet reading. We're gonna be looking at the third paragraph on your page that starts with the state of Florida. And what we're gonna do first, you're gonna read the passage first while I listen. And then if you get to a word that you don't know, I can help you. And then we're gonna read the passage a second time together where we take turns alternating word for word. All right, and then I'll read the passage again, and then you'll read the passage again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are gonna go ahead and start right there with the state of Florida. The state of Florida has many types of caves. Most caverns in, this, in the state are underwater and require diving equipment to access them. Scuba divers access these caves primarily by diving in fresh water springs across the northern part of the state. Cave diving can be extremely dangerous. Underwater caves can be complex networks or connected caverns, making them difficult to navigate. These caverns are often located at such depths that they receive no natural light. This requires divers to light their own way while exploring underwater. Ac accidents often occur when the divers become disoriented or their equipment fails, and they're, and they're unable to reach the surface before running out of oxygen. Good job. Now we're going to read it a second time and we're going to take turns alternating word for word. Okay? Okay. All right. I'll start. The state of Florida has many types of caves. Most caverns in the state are underwater and require diving equipment to access them. Scuba divers access these caves primarily by diving in fresh water springs across the northern part of the state. Cave diving can be extremely dangerous underwater caves can be complex networks or connected caverns making them difficult to navigate these caves are often located at such depths that they receive no natural light this requires divers to light their own way while exploring underwater Accidents often occur when divers become disoriented or their equipment fails and they are unable to reach the surface before running out of oxygen. All right. Um, you did very good. Now I'm going to read the entire passage again and then you'll read the passage again. The state of Florida has many types of caves. Most caverns in the state are underwater and require diving equipment to access them. Scuba divers access these caves primarily by diving in freshwater springs across the northern part of the state. Cave diving can be extremely dangerous. Underwater caves can be complex networks or connected caverns making them difficult to navigate. These caves are often located at such depths that they receive no natural light. This requires divers to light their own way while exploring underwater. Accidents often occur when divers become disoriented or their equipment fails and they are unable to reach the surface before running out of oxygen. All right, so it's the last time you're gonna read it. Would you prefer to read um, alone or do you wanna read out loud? Out loud. Okay, go ahead and read out loud one more time. The state of Florida has many types of caves. Most caverns in the state are underwater and require diving equipment to access them. Scuba divers access these caves primarily by diving into freshwater springs across the northern part of the state. Cave diving can be extremely dangerous. Underwater caves can be complex networks or can be complex networks or connected caverns, making them difficult to navigate. These caves are often located at such depths that they ha that they receive no natural light. This requires divers to light their own way while exploring underwater. Accidents often occur when divers become disoriented or their equipment fails and they are unable to reach the surface before running out of oxygen. Good job. Okay, this next intervention is called phrase drill. So I have um, given the student a new uh, text and I'm going to have you read the text um, using your copy while I follow along on my copy. All right, if you want to go ahead and just read that first uh, paragraph, please. Okay. Societies tend to function best when they are all well-defined defined laws. Yet, even more important than, law, than the laws are the people who get to decide 
enact and enforce those laws. The people and structures that make those decisions are called government. Worldwide, there are many types of government. These function at local, regional, and national levels. In all instances, government is the basis of power and control. But even when power is shared among people, problems arise. So no form of rule is perfect. And finish off that second paragraph too, An please. aristocrat go government is power and control in the hands of few people. Usually these people are thought to be different from the general population in some way. Ways in which aristocrats are thought to be different include wealth, physical strength, intelligence, honor, technology, or achievement. Very good. Okay, so I just want to share with you um, my copy, and I'm just going to point out um, the error word. So in the first sentence, instead of saying the word there, you said the word they, which I know you know that word. And then in this sentence here, you uh, said aristocrat instead aristocrat. of aristocratic. Um, so let's see. All right, so if you will reread that first sentence for me in the first paragraph. Okay. Go ahead. Societies tend to function best when there are well-defined laws. Very good. And if you'll read the first sentence of the second paragraph again for me. An aristocratic government is power and control in the hands of few people. Very good. Um... And one more time, let um, it says to read the sentence that contains that word three times. So if you'll read those two sentences again. Societies tend to function best when there are well-defined laws. And one more time. The same sentence? The same sentence. Societies tend to function best when there are well-defined laws. Very good. And then the first sentence of the second paragraph, please. An aristocratic government is power and control in the hands of, of a few people. And one more time. An aristocratic government is power and control in the hands of few people. Very good. Okay, this next intervention is called word drills. And so I've got um, 10 words here um, that we are going to review. So um, we're going to take a look at these words. And if you read the words correctly, then I'll put them in one pile. If you misread the word, um, I'll tell you the word, you'll repeat it two times, and then I'll put it in the back of the stack, okay? And we'll keep reading all the words. Um, I'll keep presenting the words until all words have been read correctly. And then I'll shuffle them and we'll try them again, okay? All right, can you tell me this word? This palatable. word is palatable. Palatable. Palatable, say it again. Palatable. One more time. Palatable. Good job. How about this word? Irrelevant. Very good. How about this word? Molecular. Very good. And this word? Oblique. Very good. And this word? Defamation. This word is defamation. What word? Defamation. And again? Defamation. Good job. What is this word? Hideous. Very good. And this word? Gruesome. Very good. And this Illicit. word? This word is illicit. What word? Illicit. And again? Illicit. Very good. And what is this word? Uh, often. Authentic. Yes, authentic. Good. And this word? Absorption. Very good. So let's look at these words again. Palatable. Very good. And this word? Defamation. Good. And this word? Illicit. Very good. So now I'm going to shuffle the words and we'll look at all of them one more time. It's hard to shuffle sticky notes. All right, what word? Authentic. Very good. What word? Hideous. Very good. What word? Gruesome. Mm -hmm. What word? Oblique. Very good. What Absorption. word? Absorption. 
Wait till I say what word so that that can be picked up on the video. Uh, what word? Absorption. Good. What word? Well, Very good. Speak up a little bit, please. What word? Defamation. Good job. What word? Palatable. Speak up. Palatable. Very good. What word? Irrelevant. Very good. And what word? Illicit. Very good. Okay, this intervention is called repeated readings. Can you scoot up here, please? We're both yes. going to be looking at the same passage. Okay. This is called repeated readings, and so it's just practicing your fluency. So we're going to start reading. We've got a paragraph that's about 100 words long. Um, you're going to begin by reading it yourself to me out loud. Um, if you get to a word that you don't know, I can help you with it. And then um, we're going to just keep reading it until your fluency and your rate um, increase and become, um, and your prosody is smooth. Okay? okay? All right. So if you'll begin reading right here. A despotic government is, ab is absolute power and control in the hands of a single person or very small group. Despotic rules often rule out of self-interest and ignore all the and ignore the desires of the people. They often come to power in one of two ways. First, they can inherit power from a relative, such as a king, queen, or queen. These are known as absolute monarchs or, or dictators. Second, a, dis a despotic government can seize power from the predecessors. predecessors. What word? Predecessors. Good job. This process is called a military coup. That word is coup. 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 What word? Coup. Good job. Often despotic governments are authoritarian. Authoritarian. Authoritarian or... Say it again. Authoritarian. Good. Or totalitarian. 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 One more time. Totalitarian. Okay. This means that the person or people in power try to control all aspects of life. A democratic government is one in which people are involved in decision making. There are two main ways democracies function. One is direct democracy, where, where people get to create, vote on, and enact laws of their own. The other, the other is indirect democracy, where, citi where citizens, where citizen elect politicians to vote and enact laws. Often in democracies, a simple majority wins but this can put people with minority viewpoints at a disadvantage good job and now you're just going to read it again doing the same process if you get to a word that you struggle with i can help you okay, okay go ahead sorry here we can i can read upside down we can do it like this a despotic government is at, is absolute power and control in the hands of a single person or, or a very small group Despotic rule, rulers often rule out of self-interest and ignore the desires of the people. They often come to power in, two, in, in one of two ways. First, they can inherit power from a relative such as a king or queen. These are known as absolute monarchs or dictators. Second, a despotic government can seize power from the predecessors. This process is called a military coup. Often despotic governments are authoritarian or, to or totalitarian. This means that the person or people in power try to control all aspects of life. A democratic government is is one in which people are involved in decision making. There are two main two main ways democracies function. One is a di dim is direct democracy where people get to create, vote on, and enact laws of their own. The other is indirect indirect democracy. Or citizen, or citizen elect politicians to vote on and enact laws. Often in democracies, a simple majority wins, but this can put the people with minority viewpoints at a disadvantage. Very good. And did you notice that that time you read it, that you were able to read those words that you mm -hmm. previously missed correctly? Very mm -hmm. good. So at this point, you would have the student read the passage one or two more times, depending on how they're... Um, their accuracy and their um, rate were at this point.
Okay, the next intervention is called Newscaster. And so we're gonna model this. We've got a paragraph to read together um, here. And so I'm gonna read it through um, several times, modeling a newscaster voice. So that means that I'm gonna be reading as if I'm talking. Um, that helps with our fluency. So I'm gonna read it as if I'm talking and you'll follow along and then you'll get a, ch a chance to um, read it with me. We'll read it together using good fluency and articulation and then you will uh, read it alone. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Anarchy is the opposite of government where a population is not ruled by any controlling body. In some senses, people view anarchy as disorder due to the lack of laws. However, for proponents of this form of government, it removes all power structures. It makes individuals truly equal because it removes power from those with wealth, strength, merit, military arms, arms, honor, and technology. Okay, I'll read it again. Listen to the my um, rate and my um, pronunciation and I'm trying to read as if I were talking. Anarchy is the opposite of government where a population is not ruled by any controlling body. In some senses, people view anarchy as disorder due to the lack of laws. However, for proponents of this form of government, it removes all power structures. It makes individuals truly equal because it removes power from those with wealth, strength, merit, military arms, honor, and technology. Okay, so the teacher might read it through a couple more times and then now um, the teacher and the student are gonna read it together. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Try to read in your best newscaster voice. Okay, here we go. Anarchy, Anarchy is, is the, the opposite, opposite of government, government where a population is not ruled by any controlling body. In some senses, people view anarchy as disorder due to the lack of laws. However, for proponents of this form of government, it removes all power structures. It makes individuals truly equal because it removes power from those with wealth, strength, merit, military arms, honor, and technology. All right, so the teacher and the student might read that again together, and then finally the student would read it alone. Go ahead. Anarchy is the opposite of government where a population is not ruled by any controlling body. In some senses, people view anarchy as disorder due to the lack of laws. However, the proponents of this form of government is it removes all power structures. It makes individuals truly equal because it removes the power from those with wealth, strength, merit, military arms, honor, and technology. Very good. Okay, for this last intervention, it is listening preview with keyword discussion. And so normally you would do this in pairs where you would have a strong reader paired with a weak reader. I've just got um, one child here doing this with me. so. Um, he'll be the strong reader and I'll be the weak reader. So the strong reader reads first and we're going to be looking at um, this paragraph here that starts right here. So the strong reader would read first because they act as a model and then the weak reader would follow. Um, and we're going to monitor each other for, for errors. So if we make any errors, then we would let each other know. All right. All right. So you go ahead and start with that paragraph there and I'm going to follow along on my paper. Not all caves in Florida are flooded. Florida Caverns State Park, located in the Florida Panhandle near M Marana, Mariana, Mariana, offers the only guided tours to airfield caves in the state. Of airfield caves. Of airfield caves in the state. The caves located within the park have existed for millions of years and were inhabited by Native Americans and early European settlers. It wasn't until the mid-1930s, however, that that the De Depression Era Civil Civilian Conversation Corps Conservation Conservation Corps 
or CCC, labor to clear the caves of rock debris and install lighting. Since the 1940s, the park has been able to invite visitors to explore several large cave rooms on a 45-minute range ranger-led walking tour. The park also, or no, the park also offers swimming, picnicking, camping, and canoe rentals. Caving is an interest is an interesting and exciting way to learn about the environment around us. Good. At that point, then the the weak reader would take a turn, and the strong reader follows along to um, monitor and correct. Not all caves in Florida are flooded. Florida Caverns State Park, located in the Florida Panhandle near Mariana, offers the only guided tours of air-filled caves in the state. The caves located within the park have existed for millions of years and were inhabited by Native Americans and early European settlers. It wasn't until the mid-1930s, however, that the Depression-era Civilian Conservation Corps labored to clear the caves of rock debris and install lighting. Since the 1940s, the park has been able to invite visitors to explore several large cave rooms on a 45-minute ranger-led walking tour. The park also offers swimming, picnicking, camping, and canoe rentals. Caving is an interesting and exciting way to learn about the environments around us. Okay, so after the uh, during this time, the teacher would model um, the procedure, and she is listening for um, words that students have difficulty with. Um, so I have made a list, a short list of words that we're going to pretend that our group had trouble with. And so I've written them on the board. And so take a look at these words, and I'm going to ask, I'm going to read um, the words to you. Inhabited, existed, debris. So can you read them together with me? Inhabited, inhabited existed, existed, debris. debris. And then as a group, we would discuss the meaning of the word. So what do you think inhabited means? What is the root word of inhabited? Habit. Or hurt. habit hurt. or hurt. Inhabit. inhabit. So what does that mean to inhabit something? To like live in a place or like to have their, it's like their home. Very good. And so take a look at the word existed. What is the root word of existed? Exist. And so what do we think existed means? To live in like to be... A thing mm hmm and then how about debris can you think of what what do you think debris is referring to like all like the, like the chunks and particles of something so can you think of a time when you might see a lot of debris somewhere at a construction site good good or maybe after a storm yeah good good job um, so then let's see um, you discuss the meaning of the words um, and then you would take turns again reading with the strong reader going first, followed by the weak reader. Okay. 